Ladies and gentlemen, my name is The Reckonist. Welcome to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I have been playing this for the last week or so. Thank you very much to Ubisoft who provided me with a pre-released copy. I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, this is a beloved franchise of mine. Anybody who knows me knows that I enjoy Assassin's Creed games. I love, first of all, the pseudo history that comes with it and the fake um, alternate history, I guess we'll call it, um, of the mysteries and this, as, as usual, there's two stories going on. There's one as the Viking and then there's the one in the inverted commas real world. And uh, I'm not going to talk about too much about the plot other than that, um, but there, there will be doing some side missions and explaining uh, some of the mechanics, talking about my experiences. Uh, there may be a few cuts here and there, but I don't imagine there'll be that many. It's been a long time since I've done anything close to a video like this. It's how my channel started off, if anyone wants to go peering back at the terrible old videos that I've made. Uh, they started off like this. I kind of did reviews of certain games and they got a lot of support from it, but uh, I never took off with it. But I'm going now anyway, shut up. Let's go into the options menu. This is, of course, the PC. I am playing with a controller because the only benefit for playing with a mouse and keyboard on these Assassin's Creed games is if you use the bow, uh, which is obscenely overpowered. Um, if you just flip in between your controller and your mouse, should you wish to do that, because it, it's so accurate. You, it's not supposed to be as accurate using it as a controller. Anyway, these are the options menu. As you can see, I am using a NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti, which is still way above the average PC. And, and you'll see in a moment, the graphics settings uh, are very much full up already. Um, there's been a recent NVIDIA patch, um, sorry, driver. And uh, yeah, this is basically what I'll be doing. There's no FPS limit. Field of views are 100%. Sometimes I like to go higher up than that on a third person game, but I've just left it as default pretty much. Uh, I'm playing at borderless. It's 19, 20, 10, 80 because I have a terrible monitor and V-Sync I've put on. Uh, graphic settings, uh, ultra high. I've not seen any change uh, or any issues at all performance wise on this game. I'm quite impressed that a beta is, oh, get that off. Has that been on the whole time? Uh, motion blur. Pleh. Terrible. Um, yeah, so everything's been really good performance-wise. Loading screens are particularly quick as well. This is uh, on a SSD, an M2 SSD by Samsung. And it's very, it's been very good performance-wise. And um, I hope to see that reiterated in the brand new consoles that are coming out, where they talk about load speeds being very important, etc. Yes, change those graphics. So yeah, world details all up. Lots of variations as well to suit your machine and even the lowest seems absolutely completely playable. I mean, look at this. There's barely any difference here when you look at general world details. The graphics quality is set as custom, um, but so that's it on ultra. That's it on ultra right there. And then we go down to low so you can see it. There's ba barely any difference in a small picture like this, but you probably see some in your bigger picture. Oh, basically the bottom line is it runs really well. I've not had any issues at all. And uh, yeah, really impressed with that considering the game's not even out yet. I'm really impressed with that. Uh, controllers, you can use the mouse and you can use the controller. These games are designed for controllers. I'm sorry to say fans of mouse and keyboard in these types of games, they are designed for it. It's playable on a mouse and keyboard. I tried it for five or 10 minutes and I was like, this feels weird. So I went straight back to the pad and um, as you can see, it's a PlayStation pad, but and it also, it even reads the fact that it's a PlayStation pad, which is like a rarity these days because the amount of games I play where it just goes, oh, you're using a control pad. It must be the Xbox controller. Even games that are like on, you know, on Unreal Engine. And then that's just a, a, a tick box if you want to make sure that the PlayStation or the Sony drives are installed so you can see the Sony PlayStation buttons on your screen is there. So yeah, there's lots of options, uh, including um, there is a lot of um, accessibility um, additions to this because there, as soon as you start it up, it tells you right away that, hello, uh, we have voice to text so you can read things better. Do you want that? So you can hear things instead of looking at them. Yeah, you can, have, but, and you know, it's, again, Ubisoft has, has got a lot, lot better. It's not the Ubisoft of 10 years ago where they were kind of like PC was second. I don't feel that these days, um, particularly for playing Assassin's Creed and stuff. Um, yeah, contextual lectures, control, controls hints as well. Enable to disable contextual control hints in the lower part of the screen. Yeah, fantastic. Um, there's all your UI stuff as well. Ranged attack warning, so that tells you if not, there's somebody's aiming at you and it's about to fire. Um, all of these things can be customized should you wish to customize them. Sound options are very much 
what you'd think. Dialogue boost. I haven't actually seen that one. Uh, boost the game's dialogue volume. So if you have trouble hearing speech, which is quite important, um, you can have that. Obviously, there's subtitles and various subtitle options there. Closed captioning as well. Different sizes. Uh, subtitle speaker name. Oh, yeah, shows the name of the speaker. There we go. I haven't actually looked at that before, before now, but you can actually put a background on, which I appreciate. You can have, uh, like, a opaque background behind your subtitles. And there's also some third-party things that are covered, and MSI Mystic Light has a support. Also, the Toby Eye Tracker, I am not sure how that would work, uh, but I'd definitely like to give it a go, but I don't have access to a Toby Eye Tracker, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, lots of accessibility options, and I'm quite impressed with the, the whole uh, options screen and the whole options given. Very much, uh, very much appreciated there. But yeah, let's get into the game now. As you can see, here I am 32 hours, 42 minutes in, and it's the 5th of November. Remember, remember. So um, the full experience, oh yeah, look at this. I am Imperator Furiosa. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, okay, first things first. You're assassin. You can change between male and female at any point. There is a plot story for this. I'm not going to talk about it, but it is quite good. Um, I'll tell you what, we'll go straight into that and have a look. We can load into the Animus. You can change Ivor, that's me, appearance. I can either be female the whole time, I can either be male the whole time, or I can be the male or female, depending on what the story part you're doing is required or what is basically canon uh, male or female um, we'll leave it on the female because holy hell that looks great doesn't it she's just a skinhead with black eyes and things like that look how cool it looks okay uh let's go to the gears i'm sure you're already aware uh the of the rpgs and and gear there are a couple of tips i might go into in another video because i found after 30 odd hours some things i wish i knew before i started number one is loot is rare Getting gear is rare, especially armor. Armor is found in real world chests and done by completing major quest lines. So it's quite light. So 32 hours in, have a look how many uh, hoods I've got. I haven't sold any. I haven't deleted any. I only have three different assassin hoods. Um, so it gives you an idea. And you can also see there, there are set bonuses based on how many of a certain set you have. For example, I've realized that we can have three of one and two of the other and you will still unlock um, both. Uh, sorry, to the first layer of everyone. So you can customize quite a lot. Um, there's also different qualities. You upgrade your armor using uh, materials you find in the world. So you're basically given a basic uh, Raven Clan armor at the start, which will be like zero of these bars. And as you d go through the go through the game, you acquire materials and you can upgrade them at your base, of which we will talk about in a little while, of course. So there is armor and is mainly updatable by yourself. There isn't too much that I've discovered that, re that places sell armor, but they all seem to share the same um, itinerary and they unlock certain weapons once you get to certain points in the game. So you go to a trader, they'll have no weapons because you've already bought them uh, from another trader and then you'll complete a couple of quests and then you'll come back and your trader will have new weapons, which all the other traders will have. So that's that's the way it's working. They're limiting the amount of crap, which you frankly got in Odyssey, because uh, you spent most of your time disenchanting stuff like that. Okay. But uh, yeah, we have... Uh, that's, that's the wrong thing. So lots of weapons. These are all the weapons that I could have possibly gotten in the game. All of them. Um, which, think about that for a second. There's not that many. 32 hours in, I have these things, and there's two hands as well. So there's combinations of stuff. Oh yeah, uh, something very amusing to me. Uh, you can do, you can wear and be offensive with dual shields. Um, we'll take a look at that in a second. But uh, yeah, there's also the, the look at that. <laughs> it's double shield build. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, so effectively the equipment has been reduced. The equipment uh, potential has been reduced, but you can upgrade items and they'll stay with you for the rest of the game, which is very, very pleasing to me, actually. It makes things uh, a lot more easy to understand. And it's late night right now. Oh, sorry. Early night? I think it's early night. Yeah, that looks like dusk. And here we are in an Assassin's Creed game. You might be familiar with one. They are open world where you can be an assassin or you can be an absolute mounted, mounted? Roaming weapons platform and you just sort of kill everything you see. Uh, let's go for a little wonder. I wish I had parked this at some place where I could do something interesting. Oh yeah, here we go. All right, first things first. This is a raid. So you see the little red thing at the top. It's still got that map uh, at the top of the screen. I can't remember the name of that, that style of map, but if you can think 
think of a map which denotes the verticality as well as the direction um, than that. And that style, please let me know because I'm struggling to find a better way they could have possibly decided to show the way things. Just a little up arrow if it's above you, down arrow if it's below you. It's superb. It's still great. Uh, right. So I, being a Viking, have a ship. Here is my ship, and I call it whenever I'm next to water and I blow my horn. Yes, I am no stranger to blowing my horn, and this is my. Ship. So it's pretty much the same thing as you'd have uh, in the previous two Assassin's games where you have a ship. Sorry, the previous Assassin's game where you have a ship. Also, there's a ship's cat down there. Look at this. Photo mode still exists as well, but uh, we need to go and have a look at this fluffy boy. Hello there. He kind of looks like he's got a blue eye, like he's blind, but he's not. He's there to stop the rats. There is actually a quest line where we established this. The Viking ships had casts. <laughs> it's quite cool. All right, okay, so first things first. We're Vikings. We are in England. Uh, whereabouts in England are we, actually? Because it's actually a very, fairly accurate representation of um, England, I would have thought. So this being the Dark Ages, essentially, this is the area of history where we have the very, like, the least amount of knowledge we have. I'm surprised they've been able to convince me that this is actually, you know, this is what it would be like. Um, as a fan and slash student of history, I am delighted with some of the decisions that they've made, um, with including some of the narrative choices that cover this time period, which is basically the Sons of Ragnar time, if you have any knowledge of that. I'm sure you'll understand what's going on in England, but again, I won't spoil it. But we're Vikings. Um, and so what do Vikings do most of the time? Actually, can I just uh, quickly sleep? Yes, okay, we're gonna put it into the daylight so we can go ahead and see all the glory for Odin. There we go. We just revolved around. Basically, I fell asleep there. All right, okay. It's morning, I guess. All right, look at this. So we're Vikings. There, what looks like a cross there. What does that mean? I think this is a monastery, and I don't know what level it is, but uh, I'm gonna have a go. Triangle to raid. Blow the horn. Go straight in. It's like we're at an abbey. When looking abbey. Abbey, right, okay. This guy is red. That means he's a pain. Oh, yeah, double shields. Watch. Look at this, double shield attacks. <laughs> okay, it's not, it's not particularly viable for my particular build. Let's get rid of that. And we'll go for what I've been playing with, which is actually quite nice. I can upgrade that quickly. There we go. So, again, now that's got four stars. If I spend some materials on it, I'll move it from bronze to silver quality, just like this flail, which is cool as hell, by the way. And, uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll use the flail. Yeah, we'll use the flail. Oh, I can't use the flail in that hand, right? Oh, no, I'm in the middle of a combat attack thing, so I can't do that. There we go. You can't change in the middle of an animation, which is fair enough, to be honest. And so I'm going to put uh, the flail in one hand, which is cool, and I'll put this offhand. So I'm dual wielding, and um, yeah, we'll talk about builds and things in a little bit. So it's very similar. Um, these are guys are in red, so this should be way above my actual um, difficulty, I think, uh, because it goes green, uh, white, green, and red. Yeah, okay, he's dead. Oh, apparently, I've un that's the first Briton I've killed. I'm not quite sure what that is, but uh, there's a lore aspect there. This guy's got different stances. I don't know that. I have not seen this before. This is a way of all learning together now. Um, yeah. So there's the usual unblockables versus um, unparryables and then death animations. One thing this game does have for us, it has some really good death animations. That was quite good. It was brutal, it was messy, and it was believable. There's also the quite possibly the best decapitation I've ever seen in the computer game. They are superb when it happened, but I don't have an edged blade in my right hand. I might have to put one on in a bit. Oh, hello. So we're raiding a monastery for uh, items, which we can then spend um, on various things, mainly the settlement, which you are given a settlement to upgrade and build, and it unlocks various things for you, um, such as a hunter who wants animal skins from legendary animals, and also wants... Is that locked? Oh, force open, there we go. Force open, please. So look at the, the doors locked. Okay, Emperor Imperator Furiosa, let's go in. 
Scan is usually gold stuff. So in these Looking monasteries, there's gold yet. chests. Um, <laughs> once you've looted them, these gold chests go away, so you can't repeat the um, raid for that particular loot, but you, your monastery stuff and um, your raids can be repeated as many times as you want, and it's great fun. Um, so yeah, raw materials and supplies are particularly for that. That's one of my crew, that is my crew member. Um, we'll get onto that in a minute because that's the, the part of the game that makes least sense to me right now because there's not adequate tutorials and there's not enough people playing the game for me to establish a pattern about that. So yeah, um, have we finished? Is that everything? Oh no, there's a, uh, nope. Is that everything? Seriously? That was really Sonic, small. Guide me. Oh, there's a guy up there. And there's a key over there. All right, well, yeah, still got the eagle slash raven this time. Um, no explanation given as to why this character has all these powers so far, and I mean that. Um, there is a plot reason for that, but the way that it just sort of chucks you into playing as the superhero really does annoy me. What's going on there? Dead body. In your dreams, I speak. Okay. Is that it? What are you? I died a terrible death. Okay. Killed by wolves or something. Oh, that's the horn telling Nobody me that uh, the raid is done. Purgatory. Have a heart, Wayfarer. Uh -huh. Give a little something to give something. Right. Let's see what's the key. Uh, prove it your spirit. It is rare that spirits return to the land of the living. How can I know what you say is true? I am a talking dead man. Is that not enough for you? Is there someone in the barrel? My soul won't rest. In now I can rest in peace yeah. in the land of the dead. And so it's a beggar, right, okay. So, oh, there's also arrows. So I'll talk about things as they come up naturally, I think. Um, I, in my head, I kind of had a, a little action plan of what's going to happen. So I'm going to play this for a while, and I'll talk about what's happening. So there's a key somewhere. What the hell? Whoa, there is a doggo. Where am I, by the way? <laughs> I'm not sure which area I am. <laughs> Okay, so again, this is pre-release. Sometimes the AI is funky. I hope that goes away. For example, that dog did nothing other than stand there while I beat it over the head repeatedly. Um, not often that happens with humans, but with the animals, I've noticed there is a, some issues with that. Right, where's that key? The key is in there. Oh, hello. So these will be familiar to anybody who's played any of the recent Assassin's Creed games. These things need a different palette or something because it's really obvious. For a hidden passage, it's really obvious where they are. So you need to change that if you want to keep it a surprise. Oh, come on. There we go. What is this? Well, it's the entrance to where this guy was hiding in the barrel, I guess, or something. What was that? Silver and opals. Opals are the uh, premium currency for the difficult. Difficult to get to you weapons, excuse me. I woke up about 20 minutes ago. I'm quite the voice buzzy. of the dead. Hello. You appear much livelier than I expected. Assassinate. I tried to swindle you. So what? I Life mean, is tough. It's good business being a dead man. It is. I agree. I mean, I can leave him. No need to get angry about no, this. I'm just going to take your shit and go. Excuse me. This belongs to the living. That's mine. Oh, he's I just now he's angry. <laughs> the puppeteer, world event complete. So there are world events like this, which you can discover. Um, you don't often. Now you are oh no, he's dead. dead. That was easy. Speak all you want. Yeah, I thought there was a guy. I thought he was in the barrel, but um, yeah. So world events are just basically it's kind of like your GTA Red Dead Redemption quests, where you just sort of discover them as you go. Find the key. Where the hell's the key? Is this the key? Oh, charlatans, no. Yeah, okay. But then in any case, so there's lots of notes around the game, which I really appreciate because adding context to video games is actually quite expensive to do if you want to voice act and animate everything. But if you just leave a piece of paper, you can let the player's imagination go for it. Is that the key? Is there on the flipping? I thought it was sit down. There it is. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, so I, I really like the contextual sort of notes that are left behind, but... um. There are lots. There are some quests based on that, and you can tell that you can tell that they were kind of added afterwards. If that makes sense. Um, they were like, "Oh, we could put something here, but we don't have time to animate and voice it. So let's just put it down in a piece of paper, and the player can extrapolate meaning and things from it." 
So yeah, there's a particular quest done. I got some things for it and experience, and that's good. So world map-wise, you see the world map itself, I didn't actually cover this. It goes down to, to the literally the east side of England up to Northumbria. So that basically means Scotland. I don't understand that. Northumbria, I'm a little bit con con confused about some of the places. Because Snottinghamshire, yeah, okay, so Nottingham. Snottingham was a Snot was a person, by the way. Um, we haven't met him in this game, spoiler. But um, Snot is an actual person who became Nottingham, of course. Uh, right, what's this one? This is a Meacham Abbey, and it's a power level of 160, which is above my pay grade, shall we say? There we go. Okay, there's a undiscovered location, and let's go for another raid just so we can get that down, so you can all understand what that's about. So. Traversing to um, towers or telephone poles or whatever you want to call them is still a thing. Um, yeah, look at the load time. That's pretty good. I'm quite impressed with it considering. Um, but look, straight in, looks superb. Now, one thing that is different about this game is you can see everything of importance that you've already discovered at all times if you are either perched like this or in your Cast about raven this land, thing. My friend. Um, yeah. So, oh look, there is a stable down there in this particular settlement. I'm not quite sure what it is, but um, I've all been here a few times. Oh, there's a guy there. Shall we go and kill this guy? I'm gonna go kill that guy. The um, Basically, the bounty hunters are around uh, from, well, the previous games. Oops. I have an I have an ability which makes me not, um, not take too much damage from falling because uh, I am a clumsy assassin. <laughs> Uh, actually, there is some, some law about that as well, but I'm not going to talk about that. Um, right. So, yeah, there are still the people, bounty hunter type people, um, knocking about. And I've just used all of my health potions. That's probably not a good thing. All my rations. Can you swim? No. Oh, yeah, my mount's a wolf because, uh, I, of course, it is. They actually give a law reason for that. I, this is a spoiler. They're basically saying in some of the contextual notes in the inverted commas real world, say this stuff exists because you imagine it. Um, so obviously my character didn't wasn't riding a wolf in real life, but in the animus they can because you imagine it. I mean, it's quite quite cute way of uh, of doing it. Saying just deal with it. Just. It's in your head, yeah? It's in it's in your mind. All right, let's go find this guy. There he is. Who is this? Who is this again? Let's zoom in. It usually gives me a name. It doesn't have a name. That means I've not met them yet or don't know anything about them. I don't know what level they are either, so this could be disastrous. Um, yeah, let's go see. Uh, oh, no, I got ambushed. Uh, th yeah, they're, they're, those guys are Saxons. They're not happy that uh, there's, there's Vikings around. They do shout things like, this is for my brother and things like that. So again, gives you context. They hate Danes and, you know, that's what I am effectively, even though you start the game in Norway. If we had one tip for anyone who's played an Assassin's Creed game before, get out of Norway as quickly as possible. <laughs> it's good advice for life, apparently. Uh, yeah, so Norway is very much baby's first steps in an Assassin's Creed game. Get out of there as soon as you can. Just do these story quests because you can get lost which I did trying to find things. Okay, so there's the guy on the um, horse there. Right, what I'm going to do is play how I usually play. I have discovered something, which isn't really covered unless I missed it. So weight is a huge part of this. As you see, weapons have weight, WGT, and so does armor. And obviously, the heavier you are, the more stamina you use when you dodge. So what I've decided to do is uh, play one-handed using a single handed weapons such as this bear claw which is in a raven spec i'll talk about the skills and abilities in a little bit but uh, i'm now lighter than i would be if uh, i was using two weapons for example and the difference on this is huge um because these guys are tricky they are tricky and so much so i reckon that they are going to get um possibly addressed in the live patches which is coming out uh, i believe tomorrow and when I can stream the game, which is nice. So it's the, this, I'm making this look a bit easier than it is based on my weight and the slow motion after dodge ability. I will talk about that in a little bit um, because there is a change to the skill tree, the talent trees, which is going to annoy a lot of people. Um, possibly me included, I've still not decided. 
So yeah, it's exactly the same combat you have. Um, as you can see, see on the left-hand side, you have abilities for your foe. On the right-hand side, you have chosen abilities for melee attack. And that guy is throwing a poison cloud, which means... Oh, wait a second. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. It doesn't tell me this. Uh, currently not available. What about now? Currently not available. What about now? Torch. Right, if I set fire to that, will it explode? No. <laughs> Some things do explode. So that's the special ability I unlocked. Um, and, well, it's going to be difficult for people to find optimum builds. I just realized I've got no health. Oh, dear. So now I've just put poison on my weapon, which I probably should have done at the start. I like that little um, thing there where they sort of... She throws something in the air. Whoops. She throws something in the air and knocks it out. So it's like a vial of poison. Kind of like that. Ooh, she threw two. Three. How many's he got? Oh, now he's drinking, so the AI... Yeah, I'm probably not going to do this. Um, because I'm so light, I'm not doing much damage. But I am... Um, as long as I don't get hit, it's fine. But I am getting hit because I'm talking. Talking and playing video games is a difficult skill. You should, you should uh, appreciate people who do it well. Obviously, that's not me. But, you know, people who do it well on streams and things. I'm not quite master. I'm not quite mastered the game enough to uh, say that I'm good at this. Ow! All right, I'm gonna do a quick scan. While you're healing, mate, thank you. I'm gonna go and see if there's anything that will heal me, and I might come back. I might die. I might not. Let's find out. Is there anything? Basically, it's bushes. <laughs> you pick raspberries, and it gives you rations. And I can't find a single one. Brilliant. I'm just gonna keep running away. See how far he chases me, actually. Actually, it's probably not what you want. What the? Oh, no. It's probably not what you want to see, actually. So we'll forget that. What was that? Oh, it's arrows. Of course, that's where I leave my arrows in the stump randomly on the road, because that's what I do. Yeah. All right. Well, you get the point there. Oh, free animal. Oh, it's in a trap. Oh, I've never seen that before. I'm sorry, mate. That's a vicious wolf that will attack me. All right. Okay. I got some... I got some health back. Okay. I got some health back. Hello. Oh, you're my friend now. Well, you can help me fight this guy. I wonder if he's fully healed. Let's find out. Yeah, critical spot. Nice. So, the wolf is now my thrall. I didn't know this would happen. There we go. All right, doing it, taking it seriously now. This is going to take a little while because I'm su I'm, I'm such a weakling. I'm mainly built for sort of single player stuff, uh, not actual fighting. There are three trees which you focus on. It's really simply done. There is a raven tree, which is like your traditional assassin tree. Then there is a bear tree, which is your traditional warrior tree. And then there is a hunter tree, um, which is a uh, wolf, I think. Yeah, it's a wolf. I haven't played the hunter yet because I'm saving that for my second playthrough because um, some of the things I've learned going from... Oh, God, no. Some of the things I've learned um, from my first playthrough. For example, there is an auto-loop function for any kills that you make. I don't know if it counts as to... Oh, God. Oh, I, you got poison? I want poison. Oh, and ear flying. Okay, you're going to die now. Oh, nope. Nope, nope. Whoa. Okay. Nope. Nope. Not allowing that. Is that? Is he dead? He died. The wolf died. I saved his life. And then I betrayed him. Gotcha. He's dead. Okay. And now, I think this is a little bit of a delay because he's sort of not quite dead yet. Wait for it. Wait for it. And now he's dead. <laughs> so now you have to confirm the kill, and it still does the we're communicating death thing. Even though it does show this, uh, the assassin blade going in. I quite like that. A worm came creeping. He tore a man in two. Then wound. Of course, there's lots of... Um, Glory twigs. Norse godness in this. Again, I'm not going to go into the plot too much. Is but, this a um, prayer? You see my left arm an there. That's a nice final vestige blade. of your oath. I will talk about this. It's given to you, and then you put it on Holy wrong, child, so you don't have to lose I your finger. Finished. Because this is like 800 AD, 800, 900 AD, so Leonardo da Vinci hasn't fixed the design yet, because 
he's not alive. So, um, yeah, I've killed a guy, Zealots, and that's the Order of Ancients from previous games. Very good. Um, they're still around. There was a quest, I'm curious about this, there was a quest where there was a ability to stop bounty hunters from coming after you after somebody tried like put a price on your head. I wonder if you don't do that if the bounty hunters actively hunt you. Hey, there's that's somebody over there. Are you a assassin or are you a patrol? You're gonna be a patrol, aren't you? Uh, yeah, okay, so that's a combat. Uh, let's go ahead and do some sneaky stuff because I have comments on sneaky stuff, including that guy really at the fire end, if you can see that. <laughs> Let's do some sneaky stuff. It is the, I will say this, it is the least required sneakiness of any Assassin's Creed game. And I say that knowing full well Black Flag exists. There is no real reason for you to sneak around at all. Not. Uh, right, I have, uh, do I have any quests that I can do right now that won't be spoilery? I don't think I do, but we can probably do another raid, I think. And welcome back. Uh, I decided against doing another raid. I might end the video on that, but welcome to Ravensthorpe, which is the town which I have made. This started off as nothing at the start of the game, and after completing various quests and uh, bringing various materials to this area, um, things were built. This is an old camp, so the longhouse was there, but everything else just wasn't. Um, so there's a blacksmith here, traders, the standard things, a fisherman. Fishing is a thing. It's actually surprising real re relaxing, as all fishing games always are. You always think, oh, what's the point in putting a fishing game in? And then you end up playing it. There's also a crew management system, which is similar, but I don't feel uh, appropriately informed Hello. as to how this fully works. Um, you can rent other people's avatars? I don't quite understand how that works, but... You know, I'm sure there'll be uh, explanations when the game goes live, hopefully a bit more better. So these areas are places that which will help you on your journey. For example, this is a blacksmith. He's not a traditional blacksmith. He only upgrades your gear. What it goes back to what I was saying today? about your gear uh, being upgradable and things. So anything with an arrow can be upgraded. I believe I have the material for that. Yes, it requires three of these carbon bars, carbon ingots. So this is a predator bow, which I've not actually used yet. Because, uh, as I say, ranged isn't my focus right now. Uh, so anything with an upgrade, cost materials, and it will then become... For example, this... Uh, I'll tell you, what, what can I actually use? Uh, this dagger. There, I don't have a dagger. So there's its stats before and after, and it unlocks a rune slot, which you get from completing quests and finding them in the real world. And uh, let's enhance the quality, and you can see it go from grey to bronze and i believe the skin will change slightly yes there are more designs available the higher it goes it also tells you if it's possible to get a uh, an upgrade i think it will say something like final form or something like that final form reached or something on those lines uh is this it yeah final appearance reached it says there on the berserker helm uh, which Done i got now. right at the start of the game and okay I'll well you thank you very much i will well, wait that's me Gunnar is actually starts off the game. Some of these, basically, you start off in Norway and end up in England. There you go. That's a quick non spoilery summary. Some of the people in this place actually leave with you from Norway. Some of them don't. Um, but I think it's quite a nice touch. You sort of, you were, feels like a settlement. Um, and yeah, you basically build these things. These people come here and they say, if you build me a, I don't know, a house for me and my brother, we will Beautiful. make um, gear out. For, from animal skins for you. We'll do that. Um, she's actually a really fun character, the Huntress lady. I believe you can romance her because there was one option which required, uh, which had a heart on it. Oh yeah, look, so this is uh, my, I assume this is the wolf uh, I ride, but uh, is there. It's part of a quest line as well. Um, there's the Assassin's Bureau. I won't talk about that because that is uh, a thing in the lore, but it exists. Uh, again, I'm trying to be as light on these spoilers as possible. And because this is Vikings and they're all about the, um, you know, visions, seeing gods, pagan things in general, this lady is the key to another aspect of this game. Um, so we're going to... I'm going to walk away because I'll end up spoiling it too much. But as you can see, performance-wise, it looks really good. It looks really pretty. Um, I feel a little bit connected to this area. It's supposed to be like really... Oh, that, that pig's walking around. Has he got a tattoo? 
These pigs are tattooed. This is cool as hell. Obviously, it's like branding, but wow. So he's somebody spent time putting a tattoo on this pig. That's great. What a lovely little touch that is. I mean, they could have just went, oh, there's a pig and leave it. But they went, oh, actually, they used to tattoo them for ownership. That's really cool. Another little detail I found out. It's full of little details, which are great. But, um, yeah, I feel connected to this area. Obviously, a little bit of um, personal investment is uh, required to unlock everything. And, you know, there's decorative things that you can unlock from completing quests, including this Roman horse statue, which is pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, I've selected th certain things. That's, um, that's that. It looks pretty good. I haven't unlocked Hello, whatever Abel. this is yet. Hello. This is... A cartographer, which requires 800 things and 60 things. Obviously, I have way too much of one thing and not enough of another. Uh, again, you get those mainly from completing raids, um, if you want to do that. I think a cartographer would be quite useful now. Um, but yeah, there's the barracks for the crew. There's, you know, there's a trader up there. There is a brewery and other things up there. But there's a full base building thing, and uh, hopefully I'll get to do another base later on. The implication is that this is just one of a couple at least a couple of places maybe we'll settle more as we go in but if you've not figured out this game is huge there is so much to do there is so much to see just like odyssey however where odyssey had a lot of nothing involved the first uh, two chapters or so all these areas are nicely spaced out there's not a huge area of nothing like there was when you were wandering across Greece. It's actually been, I'd say, curated a bit more thoroughly, and um, there's less to fill, so it makes traveling easier and uh, believable. Of course, the oh, the online services aren't working because the game's not live. Anyway, yeah, there are photographs mode, and you can still rate each other's photographs and things like that. But uh, as you see, I got a level up then. Uh, now, welcome to the skill tree. This is a problem, for me at least. It's a different way of doing things. What I'm going to do now, in fact, you know what, just for the sake of this, I'm going to reset all my skills, which thankfully doesn't cost anything. You reset all your skills. Uh, right, look at this. As you can see, these are, I'm assuming, pagan star sim sign symbols? I don't know. Um, but as you can see, some places are blurred off, so there is no way for you to know what this tree is. So you start here, you unlock all of these, and then once you get to this one, it'll uncover another star map area. And once you get to this one, it'll uncover another star map area. You don't know what is here, and it might be a waste of time. However, if you are so inclined, you can go to the Ubisoft store, and you can buy things such as a... Where are we? Here we go. Um, materials map. Territory artifacts map. Complete map pack. Opal maps. Where all the opals are. Where all the unique gear is, even though that's not necessarily useful. Where all the ability books are, where you learn new abilities. And one of them is... Um, what? Where are we? And this is so difficult to navigate. One of them is to unlock the entirety of where the skill trees are. Um, I can't quite find it now. I don't know where it's gone. Is it, like, character? Yeah, this is the usual tattoo thing. Or well, tattoos are a big thing in this as well as a collectible. I mean, these are all spoilers and things. Spoilers, possibly? I don't know. Um, but, you know, there's a unicorn boat skin because it's the animus you can just imagine, man. See, these cost 300 helix credits. Also, why? Oh, yeah, there we go. These cost 300 of these helix credits. I have 300 now. That was given to me when I turned the game on. Um, so everything cosmetic, some of them are cosmetic, can be 300. So I can use that 300 to buy this, I don't know, this rather fetching rainbow boat. Very nice. Um, but anything that you'd quite want to actually improve your gameplay. Look at this, 350. It wants me to pay real world money in order to get access to a map where I can see where things are, but I can just discover them myself. And... Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, complete map pack is a thousand, and well, that's okay. It's a sixty-dollar game. Um, Ubisoft was obviously going to have these for the last like ten years. They've been trying to shove these um, to make them more and more acceptable, and horribly, it is working. Um, but if I wanted to, to get those fifty required to just to unlock one of those, I can't just buy fifty. I have to buy five hundred, which is. 
five US dollars. Oh, this is recommended. This is the best value for moneyed one. 2,300. Oh, great. What can I get for 2,300? Nothing. Anything worthwhile is 2,500. Very clever of you. I get it. Anything worthwhile is not cosmetic, which will actually help your and your game is quite expensive. Um, I'm trying to find the other useful things. Can't be there, can it? Companions? Oh yeah, these will be skins. Yep, yeah, horses and a, let me get an eagle. Weapons, customized weapon skins, things like that. 350, look, all 350, but it gives you 300. Here's the first bit. It's almost enough for a free taste. Uh, apparently I have this. Oh, okay. These are, yeah, connect to the store. Now connect to the online store and they'll give you things as well. A Spartan bow, that's quite nice. Okay, I'll do that later. Um, Oh, I looked on there. Property, what's this? Yep, okay. And add-ons, what have we got here? Season pass, yeah, this is the ultimate edition which will include that. We're including the Legend of Beowulf, which is, I am going to say, totally not worth your pre-order. That was like the worst quest. It was over in a few seconds. Uh, un unless it comes back again, it, there is the opportunity for it to be a chain, but there is no indication that it is. It's not worth doing. Uh, Berserker pack, yeah, that came free. That all came free. So that's basically what I have there. Um... Yeah, so the the Helix credit system is back, and it's just as cynical as it was in the other games. I'm really sad about that, but, you know, it is the way of things. I'm sure there is a way to unlock the locations of all of the skill trees. Let's go. I'm going to try and find it. Where the hell is it? I thought it would be here. Tattoo set, gear set. No. Ut I'm sure it was in these utilities. Map. Abilities map. Adds new filler to find out abilities. Maybe I misread that in my rage when I was reading through this. I think it might have been that. I thought it would unlock the entire skill tree so you could you can plan ahead properly. However, it doesn't seem to have been happening, so ignore all of that. So this is the skill trees. Um, there are three aspects, as I mentioned before. There is the bear, which is mainly the melee aspect. There is the raven, which is mainly the stealth and assassin-y thing. And then there is the ranged, which is the wolf. All gear, including armor and weapons, it will be one of these aspects, and they will have improved damage. So yeah, I want to go ahead and get uh, extra damage from behind. I believe that's from range as well. Also, look at the comedy speed on these playback videos. I reckon that's uh, a bug. <laughs> it's quite funny. Um, but yeah, stealth. I unlock and spend my points. Every time you level up, you get two points. Uh, sometimes you unlock points for doing particular quests and things like that. So yeah, you pick these mainly to go ahead and get yourself your the center of one brush with death this is what i recommend absolutely everybody gets regardless of what build you're doing uh judge dodging just before uh does that all that cool slowdown stuff that we saw um there's another one which so you saw the backflips that's another one that we saw oops going the wrong way there not really not really paying too much attention here but yeah these um these non-important upgrades are just general passive upgrades and then there's an activity for that particular tree. I'm not sure what this means here, because what happens is, yeah, look, there's a buff for using all Raven gear, so it's really clear exactly what you're supposed to be wearing. It's also color-coded as well, so you can't get lost there. But watch this. When I finish this tree, when I finish this uh, star system, I guess, or whatever it is, a noise happens, and it saves. It doesn't tell me what happens. I haven't figured out what happens if you unlock all everything in one section. I'm not sure what that does. It doesn't mention it in any of the tutorials as far as I'm aware. If anybody knows, let me know. Uh, Predator bow combo. Again, I'm not using ranged. I'm just going to go ahead. There might be a, uh, a little cut here, but you, you get the point. So once we get to this place, what's here? I don't know what's here. Let's find out, shall we? Oh, it's another one. But this has two things in it. It's the first one with two. Adrenaline upgrade. So that's like... Berserker's Metal. Fight with a reckless abandon. A partially filled adrenaline bar will not be affected by an enemy's first strike. Yeah, so you get hit and uh, you can't do as many special moves. That's pretty good, though. I'm going to unlock that. That'll be useful for any build, to be honest. So I'm going to get that extra adrenaline. So now I have two adrenaline. And that's it. So then if I go here, what's over here? Let's find out. It is... Oh, it's a bow thing. Boo. But then there's another one up here. So, yep. Yeah, let's go up there. And boop. 
There we go. Look lovely. Lovely, lovely. What's this thing? That's got a pretty terror. After a stun finisher, weak enemies nearby may cower in fear. Okay. I don't want that. Let's say I don't want that. I don't want any of that. I've wasted all my points. I've got none left now. This is rubbish. I've had to go and investigate myself because there's no way of knowing what's in these places. Unless uh, there's like a physical map or something which I can buy or there's something I've missed in the shop. But, uh, oh, what's that? It's a flame. Battlefield cremation. Enemies who per perish from one or more fire attacks continue to burn. Oh, all right. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, look. <laughs> the videos are playing back quickly. But yeah, he dies. That guy catches fire. And then that guy catches fire. Okay, that's quite useful. Um, but, you know, not believable. But luckily, you shouldn't get too angry about all this because uh, resetting skills is completely free. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the thing. It's kind of annoying. I have to go and spend all my points to go ahead and get this assassin's cantrip to get over here. So there will be some planning required. However, planning will be a pain because you have to unlock everything first. Um, so yeah, that's a thing. So that's the skill trees. Um, there are various things that are cool. I'm not going to go through all of them. Missile reversal is a pretty fun one. I've not used it yet, though. It's a fun idea. It is grabbing projectiles and just throwing them back. There you go. Eh, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, so there's all sorts of things there. You can find... You can build it around your own. If you want to be an archer focus with some melee ability, there's there. If you want to be a stealth archer, if you want to be just a full-on meat shield, there's ability to do that as well. And, uh, yeah. So they play to your own personal, personal preference. All right, welcome back. I wanted to go and load a previous save where I had all my points still back where they originally were before I started messing about, and there's no way to do that. Uh, all of the save it keeps like five or six save games on the go and overwrites them instantly, and you can't like, you can't name them for one thing, and you can't uh, overwrite protect them, which is kind of annoying to me because that's how I like to play these kinds of games. I like to say, okay, this is part two. I want my save file here so I can do whatever I want next. And uh, it doesn't give you that option. Anyway, this is the boat. Uh, your crew occasionally help you. If you park your ship next to a particularly difficult enemy, they will fire missiles on it. And you can also call them to help you using that horn that we saw earlier. I haven't actually done that yet because, you know, you know we go. it's, um, you know, I don't need help, basically. So, yeah, I've also got the, uh, I've got that missile reversal to see if that will pop in. I've also grabbed the ability for uh, dual-wielding two-handed weapons, which is basically Titan's grip uh, from World of Warcraft days, if anyone's aware of that. Um, so, yeah, I've got two uh, also raven spec uh, two-handers. I have this axe, which I robbed from somebody, and I also have this sword, which I bought from my vendor, which it poisons people if they're on the ground, this doppelhander. And then this one, once you crit, uh, will set people on fire, which I think is quite cool. Um, so yeah, also what's this? Why is this here? Uh, oh yeah, I upgraded that dagger. Maybe I'll go back to that when I go back to single player. I will be starting a fresh version of the game after it comes live and goes 1.0. Um, so you expect to see that on the channel as well. I'll be streaming it and I'll probably be uploading it to the YouTubes. Um, as requested by a couple of you. Right, okay, so let's go. Uh, we've already done... I've sort of done a world quest. You I think you'll understand what a main quest will be. Uh, again, I'm trying to avoid as many spoilers as I can, so I think we best go ahead. Let's, let's just do this big raid, actually. Where? Meacham Abbey? What level was that? 160? That's too far. I'm, like, le power level... Not that. Okay, let's go to there, which is Oxfordshire. Yes, it's ye olde English. Uh, let's go here. Oh, so let's go there. It's quicker, and uh, we'll go ahead and finish video with a raid, and you'll see a little bit different uh, now. This is going to be a bit more difficult than the first one that we opened the video on. And then I'll talk about, well, while we're doing that, I will talk about what I think about this game. Uh, it's Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um reduced. I say reduced in a good way. The main difference is uh, the, the the world is Let's not empty for a, a very large majority of it. They've also toned down things such as the, the weapons and the loot and things like that, as we mentioned before. Uh, and I'm a big fan of that because that was always a huge sort of problem, which is disenchanting or, you know, salvaging weapons uh, from other places. As you see, we've got these sea shanties as well still. 
just about hear it. But then you can also switch to a story by pressing R1. I think that was in Odyssey as well. Um, yeah, Dag. He's, uh, yeah, there's also lots of real world things. Let's talk about the history aspect of this. Can you think of a more unappealing mass market era than this? Um, no, I don't think. This is hardly the Colosseum at Rome. It is hardly the Great Pyramids of Giza. It's hardly, you know, it's not Renaissance Italy. This is England in the Dark Ages. And they've managed to make it interesting to me, certainly. So with its, um, with its pseudo history, they can take liberties. And of course they do, particularly with the Roman ruins. Yes, there were Roman ruins around this time. But I wasn't aware that there was like double, double flawed Roman villas and things like that knocking about. Um, I knew there were Roman villas at some point, but, it, it, you know, it doesn't. It, it can take those liberties because it's a video game for one. And it's not 100 percent historically accurate, which is two. It's just based in history. And uh, that works in its favor immensely. Um, it looks gorgeous. It works superbly on my above average PC, to be honest. And I'm sure that the uh, new era of consoles will look phenomenal. I mean, look at this stuff. I mean, I know that's a big full on God Ray, but look at it. That's beautiful the way it's going through there. The shadows are spot on as well. Um, is that the place? Oh, we're supposed to be raiding that place. Uh, all right, there's usually two points of entry. Look at the Roman ruins. Do you remember le learning about the Roman ruins that look like that in England? No? Oh, and now it's a church. Well, suppose it would be Roman. Uh-oh, stop. Yeah, um, that's the thing. It's St. Albans. I have family in St. Albans. Let's go and kill some of my ancestors. Uh, right, yeah, let's go. Uh-oh. Come on. Follow the river. Yeah, if you don't want to control it, you can still just automatically pilot to these places. And of course, this is not how a boat works. Uh, oh, yeah, because... Oh, God. Yeah, I know what's happening. Right, just turn around and finish it while I'm talking. Idiot of a man you are. Yeah, um... It's... I've, I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, I also really, really enjoyed Odyssey for a while. Uh, I am about... I think about a third of the way through the game and I'm 30 hours in. There is a huge amount of content on here, which makes me feel grateful. We'll and then there. another part of it, make, the cynical part of me thinks, well, they're obviously making a lot of content. So you play it and then obviously give in to the promotions for buying the index credits and things like that. I'm sure after launch, once review scores are in stuff, they might turn that all up because there's not been any sort of in-game advertisements for Helix credits now. Anyway, this is going to be interesting. I've not used the two-handed, uh, two, the two two-handers before, uh, the Titan's grip thing. Um, let's see how this works. Hello! I see people. Uh, wait. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is an annoying little thing. Look at this. This guy here, he's running. He's a civilian. He's a coward. Civilian casualties will result in desynchronization. Just like the Vikings. They never killed anybody innocent in their raids, did they? Yeah, so we're supposed to be the Viking with a heart of gold. Uh, I don't know about that. I understand why they've done it, but come on, that needs to be... There needs to be a toggle or something. For, oh, got toggle for that, I think. Hello. Uh oh, are you going to hit me? Yes, but it's fine. I'm made of st sterner stuff than that. Hello, you guys. All right. Whoa. Okay, bye. Two two-handers. See you later. All right, I'm going to run. I'm going to run. Okay, I haven't gotten any adrenaline, but now you can see you got three adrenaline points, which will be handy. Whoops. Wow. Uh, cool. Well, that happened. That was a thing that happened. Uh, yeah, so St. Albans. Let's go. Uh, look, look at all these uh, towers we can zip line down. Oh, this is my favorite part of any Assassin's Creed game. Huh. Oh, it doesn't let me attack it. Damn it. Why can't I attack off those? I'm sure you should be able to. I'm sure you used to be able to, anyway. Hello. Hi. What? Right, okay, I am pressing attack right now, and it's not letting me do it because I think I'm in between states. Yeah, I've got one foot on the platform and one foot on the rope, but it still thinks I'm on the rope. Interesting. So we can't, can't attack. Oh, yes. So sabotage or use. Let us go ahead and use. So, yeah, you can use artillery. It's a scorpion, I guess. Uh, it's just a big crossbow. Not particularly powerful, though, because I'm fairly certain my bow on its own kills them. I can't see how this would be very good uh, to use as a tactic. I mean, it auto-locks, but pretty much your bow does as well. 
if you, especially if you have a, a build in it from what I saw. Um, yeah, I am thoroughly in love with it. If you have an interest in Assassin's Creed games, you'll probably love this. If you have a history, sorry, you have an interest in history, you'll probably love this because there are real world people and what the hell is that noise? Oh yeah, look at that, it's a weak point. If I hit him on there, it crits and now he's stunned. And since he's stunned, I can run over to him before he resurrects. No, he resurrected. And I was trying my hardest to get there so I could do a fancy assassination on him. Oh, yeah, this guy's over here. Hello. Oh, no, no. All right, let's move. These things are actually quite powerful against me, but not against the AI by the looks of things. All right, there's a little heal there. Oh, see it glint. Yeah, okay. Arrows are a thing as well. I haven't, as I said, I've not built, used the um, the hunter tree properly yet, but arrows, I have run out of arrows frequently um, because the arrows are based purely on the type of bow you have. The, 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 the ammunition is based on that type of bow, whether it's a light bow, uh, a predator bow, or quick bow. I think quick bow. Um, yeah, I was supposed to be raiding here. I'm just sort of yakking on while traversing very easily. But look at how detailed these things are. I don't know how historically accurate they will be because nobody really knows. Some places still exist, of course. Hadrian's Wall is up and obviously in a bit of a better state than it is in real life now. Uh, but Hadrian's Wall is there. I'm guessing the Antonine Wall and things will be up there as well. I don't know. I haven't been that far up the map yet. Uh, we'll see. But there is a huge part of England not yet unlocked and I hope that they do that. They unlock the rest of it um, at certain points, maybe in an expansion, of course, um, season pass type thing. But um, there is a huge scope for... Oh, great, really. There's a huge scope for... Uh, oh, great, uh, sorry, for um, prolonging the life of this. There was sort of less for Odyssey. I think they could have done a lot more with uh, Origins because I did really enjoy Origins. Um, as well. I've enjoyed all these remakes for Assassin's Creed. Again, the point I originally made, this is the least assassin-y Assassin's Creed there's been. And that includes... That includes, um... Black Flag. And it also includes... Um... Oops, crap. The last two games. These... Ever since the Assassin's Creed relaunch, as it were, in inverted commas, that, um... Where we kind of went pseudo-Dark Souls in combat. And... I, I have a I have a hot take on that. The assassin ever the assassin the assassin's part of Assassin's Creed played now is awful, and I mean that it is terrible uh, to play. I went back and played uh, three four hours of uh, Unity, which was probably the most stealthy after the first one. Um, certainly the most parkour e, and it doesn't hold up and. They were smart to go away from it. I have no idea what that is. Oh, I got some Order of Ancient stuff. Help I... me out here. Furiosa needs help. Who's this geezer? He's got a crown on. Is that a king? Is that an actual king? Who's this? Who's this geezer? He's got a mask on and the crown helmet. I want that. That's cool as hell. Uh, yeah. So it doesn't hold up playing. Uh, an Assassin's... Assassin-focused Assassin's Creed game. But they can't change the name, but they can change the gameplay. You can do bits. I've done the least amount of backstabs ever in this one so far. I've done, like, probably, honestly, the amount of people I've killed with an, uh, a backstab in things is so low. Not because there's not the opportunity. It's just not efficient. It's not built for that. It's built for combat and fair play. Being a Viking is combat focused, not necessarily stealth. Uh, so the, I think they made the right decision there. Um, but play, if, if you want to know how it... If you have ideas of how Assassin's Creed become more assassin-y, let me know because I am struggling to think of how... Oops. That'll happen a lot, by the way. Accidentally going into photo mode. Oh, look, this is the back way in. It's locked. I can't get in there. They're all facing this way, which looks like a door. So let's go in that way. So let me know how you think they could make it more assassin -y. Wow, there is a just a wolf on its own attacking citizens. Uh, interesting. Oh, hello. Oh, that would have hurt. They were right on top of his dome. Ouch. Yeah, so I'm, I'm happy with the direction they've gone. 
Uh, there's obviously got to be another way in. Usually when that happens, it's up. Let's find out. Oh no, there is a way in here? No, it wants me to go up. So, yeah, it doesn't hold up. And I don't know what they could have done possibly to make it more Assassin's-y. Um, the game runs well. It looks fantastic. The story, even though we didn't cover too much of it here, was is definitely interesting, if not a little kind of predictable, I thought. Unless there's a mega twist coming at some point. Um, I will say this, though. I am interested, I'll put it that way, interested in how they're going to put the real world inverted commas plot as in the ones that the, those that came before and how they're going to link that to what is obviously going to be the um gods of the vikings into it i they have already kind of hinted at what they're doing with that can i go through the window yes i didn't think about that i never think about breaking a window let's go in I say, let's go in. Oh my god, I had to smash the only window you can't vault in because there's barrels there. Wonderful. So, oh my god, they've both got barrels. I can't go in because of the barrels. Are you kidding me? You've deliberately made me not be able to go through their video game. Are you on, are you for real? All right, this side, do you have barrels as well? No, you have an unsmashable window. Some, but there was some oversight there, and they were like, well, rather than replacing the window, let's just put a barrel there and make it in it. So, oh, this is, is this open? Oh, no, this one's barred. Wait, how do I get in here? Right, I'm not going to finish this video until we've got in. I'm going to keep talking. Uh, the game, phenomenal. I think, I think it's a phenomenal game. I really, really am enjoying my time with it. To wallow in and just get lost... And just spend hours and hours and hours not even playing the game that it wants to. You're just collecting materials on it. Doesn't, it doesn't feel like a chore, which I think is the biggest compliment I can give a game which wants you to, when it, when it doesn't want you to. Um, what the hell? How am I going to get in here? Look, sorry about the cut there. Uh, it was me. Basically, I've cut about 10 minutes of me moving from that position over here and trying to come up with a coherent way to end this review. My review ending is thus. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is the best Assassin's Creed since Assassin's Creed 2, in my opinion. Assassin's Creed 2 will probably always be my favorite one. Maybe even the first one, just because of sheer shock factor when I finally realized that the, the, the overarching plot that's one thing, in fact, I'll mention that. Assassin's Creed, the first game, they didn't talk about the animus at all in any of the PR. It was just purely, this is Jerusalem, this is what, this is, this is Accra, or whatever. Um, and, like, surprised me. That's why I love Assassin's Creed 1. Assassin's Creed 2 was the most complete and, um, the most complete and certainly the most the most memorable of the Assassin's Creed's for most people, not necessarily me. But this one is really, 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 really Odyssey. strong, and I can't imagine many people who enjoyed Odyssey not enjoying this game more. The only issue would be for other people enjoying this, I think, is just the setting. It's not the Colosseum. There is no Parthenon. You know, there is no Eiffel Tower or Notre Dame or whatever. There is none of that. It isn't it isn't going to places you'd recognize. Um, so, for most people, that is, of course. Being an Englishman, I recognize some of the things here, but this was over like a thousand years ago. But I think they deserve to be praised for taking a little bit of a gamble and taking it to Dark Age England after going from an entire nation of Greece in the last game and going into just a few boroughs of England is uh, incredibly in incredibly brave and they deserve respect for that. Uh, I am in love with this game. This game, I'm scoring it 9.5 out of 10. The only half missing is the uh, sort of teasy microtransactions. Uh, which I'm still annoyed at, but you might have different opinions on it. I am, I'm annoyed at a $60 game providing content or ease of use or quality of life improvements for money, uh, which is really annoying to me. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this game. I hope you do too. I am going to be starting a brand new game once the game goes live uh, in a few... Well, what I'm going to do is I'm able to stream it just before it comes out. So I'm going to stream. I'm going to start a brand new game when it comes out and uh, stream all the way through. Uh, to the end of which I am nowhere near right now after 30 hours. I'm only on chapter 2. 
I don't know how many chapters there are, but I'm guessing there are a lot more to come. So there is a hell of a lot of game for your money and a hell of a lot of enjoyment if you ask me. So this has been The Reckonist. This is my Assassin's Creed review. I've given it a score of 9.5. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And if you want to see more videos like this, why don't you leave a thumbs up um, and let me know that that's the kind of thing that you wanted to see. But um, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. And my Emperor Thor Furioso, what a lovely little shot to end it on. Oh no, it's a bit too, bit too bright there. Let's get a nice, let's get a nice photograph. All right, let's move it up a bit. I mean, we have to move down. The sun is a problem, but let's uh, let's go into the edit mode and put one of these filters on. I think these filters will get improved or added to. Eh, that'll do. Yeah, my name's been the Reckonist. This has been Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it.